2006 Hyundai Tucson front-wheel drive, four-cylinder. I'm going to do a quick overview, review, test drive of this car. I want to talk to you about value, something that doesn't seem to exist in cars anymore. Please, if you find any of this content useful, please consider like, subscribe. It's free. helps me out. I really appreciate it. 2006 Hyundai Tucson. Hyundai, interesting company. In the 90s, they were making stuff, the Excel, Sonata, Elantra. It was kind of half Mitsubishi designs, trying to make some money. Quality control, maybe not the best. Well, you could say that's true of a lot of car manufacturers. Uh, so they started making basic stuff off Mitsubishi architecture, engines. They cost a uh, good value. The Tucson is one such vehicle. This thing was brand new for 2004. What you get here was a lot of value. We could go over the shortfalls of this thing, which is easy to do compared to newer cars. But at 2006, things weren't as sophisticated. They weren't as complex and you could get value. I want to remind you that this car, this is a base model, front wheel drive, it's got AC, power windows, which was a thing back then. Remember when you used to buy a car and it would be like power windows, power door locks is a feature. Um, 140 horsepower from the 2 liter, which as far as I can tell is a kind of Mitsubishi design. 5 speed manual, front wheel drive. This car was $18,000 new. $18,000 for an SUV. It's a small SUV. Well, it's not that small. Um, but it's pretty good value. Let's talk about how this thing is built, how it's designed. Let's look over the good points first. There's a couple of bad points. They're not really bad. Just the way that it is. This thing has a nice interior. This thing has a cloth interior. I actually bought a full leather interior while I was troubleshooting the airbag system on this. It's not necessarily more comfortable. I like the stitching on this thing. This thing has 306,000 kilometers. I'm going to let you know. I bought this when I needed a car to drive back because we got sick, couldn't make our flights. It was very cheap, but uh, I had to fix a million things to pass a complex inspection. The insert cluster is pretty basic, but it looks cool at night. It has a nice green glow to it. The cabin is quite open and airy in here. These plastics are actually they're a little hard, but they're reasonable quality. I like the door cards. They're actually kind of sporty. They remind me of what you might get in, like, the Tiburon. They're probably the same, actually. Five-speed, which is kind of high-mounted. When you use this gear shift, it feels quite high, because you sit very high in this thing. Um, air conditioning... Uh, I put this nice backup camera Android system in here. Backup camera is very popular. Back seats, there's quite good room. This thing is optimized for room. I like this folding, uh, these nice flat uh, load floor things on here. These actually fit quite flat, which is a quite a nice feature. These seats have excellent rear seat room. For a compact machine, it's quite good. It looks nice from the back. Um, the glass opens separately, mechanical, not like my BMW with an incredibly complicated electronic system. These are quite useful to play stuff in and out. This thing has a ton of room in the back. It looks compact, but the vertical height of this, you can actually fit quite a bit in here. Uh, you know, power outlet in the back, everything you need for cheap. Let's have a look at the engine bay. What do we got up there? There are two models of the Tucson you can buy. There's the 2.7 liter V6, which I think is rated 172 horsepower. You know what I like? Hood things you can put lower and put the hood vertical. This is the base model with a 2 liter uh, dual overhead cam, 140 horsepower. I did the timing belt on this thing, uh, and the water pump, and the tensioner, and the valve cover gasket. The valve cover gaskets have these little half moon seals, and they leak oil. So I did that. This is very easy to change, relatively speaking, for a front-wheel drive car. The parts are very cheap for this car, which is a huge benefit in low cost of ownership. Um, I did the steering rack in this car, <laughs> which was not that expensive. It was leaking everywhere, and it won't pass inspection, which is inner and outer tie rods, too. Did that. Front control arm bushing completely fell out, so I had to do that. Uh, CV boot was leaking, put a big clamp, had to do that. Um, one of the door handles broke off. This one, I don't know, they're pulling on it too hard. I replaced that, you have to take up the whole door card. Fish that in there, had to do that. Rear brakes, had to do that. Parking brake shoes were worn out, had to do that. Wasn't too hard. Again, these parts are cheap, which is a big bonus from this. Did a little bit of body work and stuff. Um, mostly mechanical, this thing was pretty good. The airbag is the problem. So, <laughs> If you don't know about this, airbag systems have a, basically it's its own computer system. It's got its own network in there separate from the engine. Uh, there's lots of things that went bad. There's a sensor in here. It's called the, well, it's not a sensor, but it's how the wiring from the airbag and the horn gets through. It's called a clock spring. That was bad. All the Hyundais apparently went bad. It was very hard to find one. A theme about Hyundais is that uh, many of the models are completely different. The Santa Fe has different stuff than the Tucson, 
which is the same as the Tiburon, but isn't the same as Kia's. They all got different stuff. So that clock spring was fragged. There's two impact sensors in the front, which are different on friggin' every Hyundai model. I had to find that impact sensor and replace it. They're expensive, new. Uh, and then the occupant sensor is bad. So in the seat, there's a sensor that tells if the person or not in there. It's very hard to diagnose and figure out what it is. Essentially, I ended up changing the computer that's underneath that controls that and the seatbelt tensioner. It wasn't the sensor that was bad, it was the controller, which apparently, so this is the theme. Hyundai was trying to figure stuff out here and a whole bunch of these things went wrong. Um, there is some stuff here that's build quality, there's some stuff that's not. What is it like to drive? Ah, uh, the engine makes decent power. It does, it's coarse, it's kind of noisy. <laughs> It's not massively powerful. It's a 90s engine, uh, but that's why these things cost a lot, or cost so little. The five-speed has good action, but this thing has a, an atrocious amount of rev hang. What's rev hang? To pass emissions on these things, basically, when you shift gears, it'll be like 4,000 RPM, it'll be like, it'll be like, and then you shift, it's like, so it hangs to burn extra fuel in there. But it means that you want to do gear shift slow. So normally in the BMW, you'd be like, meep, meep. This thing, you want to shift like this. Meep, meep, meep. <laughs> to catch up with the rev hang. And also when you let the clutch out, it only lets you pull it out at a certain speed. It's got a valve in there so that you can't just dump the clutch. It releases it slowly for extra ease of driving. Once you get used to it, it's totally fine. Uh, the handling, it's not super precise. Uh, it's a little soft. I mean, this thing has a lot of K's on it. Um, but I have hustled this thing through mountain passes when I was coming back from Vancouver pretty quickly. And she'll certainly do it. The brakes are pretty good, has decent feel. Again, I have to stress, this thing is incredible for the money. In, in the world now, any small SUV costs you $30,000. Most are $40,000. This thing was cheap. These don't exist anymore, as far as I can tell. Um... So the value is quite good. I became very uh, fond of this car. This is a car where I never paid any attention to it whatsoever before I got it. I thought the Korean looks were a little strange, but I've gotten used to them. It's not bad. Again, parts are very cheap. It's reasonably well built and it's low cost. You want to take this thing for a drive? I know you're excited. Let's go. All right, let's get this bad boy fired up. Oh yeah. You know, the timing belt on this thing, <laughs> it goes off of the off the crank then it goes one tensioner and then one cam pulley. That's it. Hey, look, another Tucson. I'd like to try the V6 Auto. I think it would be well suited to this car, but this thing only weighs 3,100 pounds, the front wheel drive, and like the steering rack, easy to change compared to the four wheel drive, which apparently is not as easy. So there's good value here and excellent mileage. I made on the highway, like low 30s to the gallon, you know? It's not like unbelievably good, but it's pretty good. I really need to get a better camera mount for these test drives, but we're gonna do a quick pull here so you can see what kind of speed we got from this rocket ship. It's really not bad. Again, I was driving mountain passes that were steep and I was passing lots of people with a fully loaded car, so it definitely got enough power. You just gotta rev it, right? I mean, not shocking. All right, we're gonna stop here. We're gonna do a quick 60 pull, by like 60 kilometers an hour, so I don't get in trouble. Here we go. Hold on to your pants. Not too bad, right? Everyone loves seeing the Tucson make a rip. Again, this thing is quite softly sprung, you know, so the ride's a little roly-poly but uh, it is comfortable. I would like a little more uh, stiffness, but uh, it wouldn't really suit the character of this thing, I don't think. This is a perfectly nice, roomy car that makes decent mileage, and the five-speed does make it more fun to drive, in my opinion. I think and it makes any car more fun to drive. But uh, cheap parts, you know, reasonable build quality, you know, I, you can't go wrong with this. I've spent a huge amount of time fixing every little thing on this thing to pass the inspection, every light bulb, every sensor, very frustrating, ripping my hair out. But it's because I respect this car. In a world where things have gotten out of control for costs, you know, huge lease payments, eight-year financing, you know, you can get a Hyundai Tucson that does the job. It's still kind of fun to drive, and they're cheap. 
well, it used to be even cheaper before COVID, but, you know, I think she deserved a second chance because it was not long for this world. Uh, certainly would never pass an inspection again without all the airbag stuff fixed, the steering rack, the oil leaks, you know, and the brakes uh, and the handle and the body. But other than that, totally worth it, right? Anyways, what's your Tucson experience? You know, you have a good time? I like this thing. This is a car that, you know, what's that up there? Is that the only one in Canada? Probably. Coming soon. Do you love your Tucson? Tell me about uh, your stuff. See you in the next one.